Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at All Saints at 9 o'clock. Good to see all of you, those who are usually worshipers at 8, those who are usually worshipers at 10, and anyone who is a guest this day. It's wonderful to gather as one to worship God in this season of light and epiphany. One brief worship note in your bulletin where it says Gloria, the words are found on the bulletin insert. And so it is not embedded in the flow of the bulletin. And so our Gloria words and music are found in the bulletin insert. Please stand as you are able. The opening hymn is number 690. God <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen.
God be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. In our lesson from the Hebrew Bible, God contends with the people of God, reminding them of the saving acts done for them and instructing them in the good that God expects. The very mountains and hills are called as witnesses. God led the people out of Egypt through and through the wilderness and safety, yet they sin. It is not animal or human sacrifices the Lord wishes, but that people act in justice with loving kindness and humility. This is a reading from the book of Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what the Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my first, firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Remaining seated, we will say Psalm 15, responsibly found in your bulletin. The psalm describes the virtue of one who is worthy to worship the Lord. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide under your holy Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right. Who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not. In his sight, the wicked is rejected. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He is sworn to do no wrong. And does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall be overcome. In this reading, Paul directs the Corinthians' attention to God's way of using what is weak and lowly, even what the world regards as foolish, to accomplish the divine purposes. Paul emphasizes this understanding because a number of these new Christians have come to think of themselves as especially gifted, powerful, and wise. 
As the cross has shown, however, God's ideas about what is wise and noble are often quite different from ours. Our only boast can be in the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and the foolishness of Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, who beca became for us wisdom from God and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. 
Please be seated. Life and scripture are full of paradox. At the very center of Christianity is the cross of Christ. God gives us, God blesses us with paradox. An upside-down world of redemption where life emerges from the throes of death. Where the first are last and the last are first. And where we who follow Jesus are at the same time justified, made right with God. And sinners who just can't get our acts together. A world where the object of torturous death brings life. And placed against this time and world standards of power and might, the message of the cross of Christ seems stupid and offensive. And yet, and yet it reveals the paradoxical way God has chosen to work power and salvation through weakness, rejection, and suffering. In Lake Winnipesaukee terms, this paradoxical faith is like a no-wake zone. We back down the boat ramp or loosen the lines at the dock ready to embark on a big adventure. We want to go full throttle into our latest lake afternoon. We do this without a care in the world or a care for those around us or for the safety and the beauty of creation. But then, we remember our boater safety course all those years ago. Maybe we notice the marker or the sign or the waving arms of fellow boaters that when in the waters here, we are to motor justly. We are to love the serenity of creation all around us. And we are to boat safely and slowly in the no-wake zones. Christians, on the one hand, are called to do what is good and what the Lord requires, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God. And we often do this at a low, slow, steady speed, staying within our comfort zones not making any waves. And then on the other hand, we who want to do our own thing, focus on ourselves and we rush to get what and where we want quickly, forgetting all that God has promised and getting all that God And when we do remember what is good, we might go through the motions, getting through them quickly hoping that worship is only an hour or less to get back to those people and places and things that don't rock the boat of our lives. We live in a no-wake paradox of what we are to do and what we do. God doesn't want or expect lavish sacrifices to attempt to earn divine favor Instead, God wants us to remember at all times that God is with us. God has stuck by our side. God has blessed and provided for us. And God empowers and requires us to do justice, to loyally love God and those that God loves, 
and to walk intentionally in service to God and all of the creation God has made. God wants us to live in justice and hope. There's a Latin American prayer that asks, Lord, to those who hunger, give bread. And to those who have bread, give the hunger for justice. These words are not that different than those spoken by the prophet Micah this morning. The hunger of God's people has already been filled by the mercy of God. Jesus speaks of this in the Beatitudes. So that the disciples sitting at his feet, those who overheard gathered on the mountain and we here this morning, know that we are called by God to live them this day. To feed the hunger of others through lives of justice, kindness, and humility. We do this in paradoxical lives, moving between the comfort zone of our personal and societal no-wake zones, where Christians are nice and soft-spoken, quietly clothing the poor and feeding the hungry, and between wave-making cries for justice, advocating for those who hunger in the walls of power and rushing out into the crashing waves of need without regard for a society who sees this following Jesus thing, our actions and very lives as sheer foolishness. Oh, my people, God gets that justice Kindness and humility move us in and out of no-wake zones. God cries out through the alarm clocks of prophets and the life and the death of God's only Son, our Lord, not wanting us to quietly ignore the injustice, need, and pain of those poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, but to wake up and to move beyond our comfort zones, to be merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, knowing that when we do this, it will be seen as foolishness. People will revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely because you live and love like Jesus the Christ. You see, Jesus lived and loved outside of the no-wake zone of the expectations of the empire, outside the no-wake zone of the status quo of Jewish society. Jesus lived and loved, died and rose again to free us from all foolishness and oppression. One of my favorite theologians who challenges me most is a Peruvian philosopher and Dominican priest. Gustavo Gutierrez says that Christ's liberation goes to the roots of all injustice and exploitation. This is not just something for we to think about in churches. It's not an intellectual or even a spirituality that is the comfort zone of many of us who call ourselves Christian. Rather, because love and sin are historical realities, they live in concrete conditions in the people and in the places that God calls us to. The Bible speaks of justice and liberation as opposed to slavery and humiliation and oppression of the poor. God becomes truth in the heart of the society when the social classes question themselves and see themselves and take the part of the poor, of the grassroots classes, of the despised races, of the marginalized cultures. Gutierrez reminds us that to believe is to love God, to be united to the poor and the exploited of this world. 
To believe is to preach as Christ did the kingdom from within the struggle for justice, which ultimately led to his death. It has been a difficult week for many. For many, including Christian communities, one in particular, a couple, one born in the United States, one born in Iran, outside of the country, en route when the president's proclamation was made, unable to stay in the country. During this time, I am reminded that we are called to humbly follow a Middle Eastern refugee who taught about the Good Samaritan, who embraced the outsider, and who was killed by the unholy marriage of religion and empire. Today is our annual meeting day. It is a day when we as the people God has gathered as All Saints Church look back on 2016. We do that to reflect on how we as God's people have moved beyond our no-wake zones to meet Jesus at the roots of injustice and exploitation. It is a day when we pause to reorganize and to recenter ourselves in the paradox of the cross of Christ. And then to look forward and beyond these walls to how and where God is calling us in 2017. How through our life together we are awakened to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. May it be so in Jesus' name. Let us stand and say what we believe. Called to be a light to the nations, let us pray for God's justice, peace, and healing. We pray for the wholeness in the body of Christ, bind up fractures within the church, humble the proud, and lift up the lowly. Make us one at your table. Hear us, O God. We praise you for the beauty of your universe, For the light of the stars, for the majesty of the mountains, we thank you. Mold us into stewards of your creation. Hear us, O God. 
we pray for the peacemakers around the world. End violence, restore communities, stop bribery within political systems, reign with justice and peace, and commit us to the act of discipleship. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our neighbors who mourn, who have no clean water, who hunger, provide their daily bread, heal the forgotten, the lost, and our enemies, family, and friends. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for this congregation. Bless the work and play of young and old. Deepen our faith. Expand our discipleship. Equip us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for all the saints who died proclaiming the gospel. Strengthen us through their witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray this day for all refugees, immigrants, and displaced persons that they may find peace, protection, and comfort they seek. May we find the strength to care for all who are exiled from their homes. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all whose human rights feel precarious or threatened. May we have the strength to stand up for justice and dignity for all people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all the leaders of this land and of your church. May they do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly, serving those entrusted to them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers in the name of Christ, the light of the world, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that light and love with one another. For some brief announcements. Are there announcements from any of our ministry leaders today? Beth Smith, our treasurer. Uh, I just want to say that the pledge statements went out via email, I think last week. So if any of you haven't received it, you might look in your spam and see if it got stuck there. Uh, but if you didn't receive it, do let me know and I will get another one off to you. We're going to try to do these pledge statements more frequently because we can do it by email. So Deb was very helpful in helping me to figure out how to get it done. It turns out we had to do it from her computer, not from mine. So anyway, we got that done. Thank you so much. And if you see any discrepancies, please let me know. Thank you. Other announcements? And Bullet in the back. There is a Wolfboro Friends of Music concert this afternoon over at uh, Brewster's Anderson Hall. It's a group called the Intersection Trio, uh, three uh, classical musicians. Uh, the tickets at Blacks are sold out, but I will have tickets available downstairs at the breakfast, or you can just show up and buy them at the door, $20. The concert is at two. 
Thanks, Anne. Other announcements? Diane Waspa. Good morning. Just a reminder that next Saturday, uh, February 4th at 2 o'clock, uh, we have our uh, All Saints uh, Preschool uh, Annual Valentine Tea. Uh, and um, you can get uh, your tickets uh, at the preschool, uh, which is open from 9 to 12. Great. Thank you. Other announcements? So we are pleased to have Deb Hoyt with us our parish administrator, who some of you may not have seen the face and the name together in one place or time. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I know that uh, some of you have been leaving notes on my desk that you need name badges. We are in the process of hopefully doing something new with the name badge situation downstairs because they keep falling to the bottom. But if you do need a name badge, Today, I have a piece of paper and a pen in a book that I'm going to leave in my office and hopefully get badges done Monday. So if you need one, please come and see me today. Thanks. Thank you. Our annual meeting follows. There will be an expanded coffee hour immediately following worship. This past week, uh, Wolfboro Reads, which was to begin the discussion of just mercy uh, by Brian Stevenson, was uh, snowed out. And so we're hoping to start again Tuesday. If you have not uh, picked up the book, I think we still have copies in the library. I heard a rumor of that the other day. And uh, we invite you to come and join us. It's a wonderful book. It's a fairly quick read. And it is a disturbing book about the American uh, justice uh, system, uh, the criminal justice system, and, um, and death penalty. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a good read, an important read. So I commend that to you. Thursday afternoons, we also are continuing our wandering through the book of Romans at 3 o'clock, and I encourage you to come out for that. Um, and we have our weekly midday Eucharist at 4 o'clock immediately following that. So come for Eucharist or come for Bible study and Eucharist on Thursdays. Let us take our offering walking in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
things come of you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in one bread. 
This is the Lord's table. Jesus is the host, and we are his guests. All are welcome to be nourished, fed, and forgiven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with kindness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Please stand as you are able for our sending blessing. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you as a mother does. Go in peace. Follow the good road. And may God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.